Greetings, WordPressers. Jackson here. Welcome to the channel. How are you? Well, I know how I am. I'm feeling a little bit gutted. Well, a little bit annoyed, maybe a little bit silly that I only just discovered this thing about SEO and WordPress about three or four months ago and was even more miffed off that I could have been using it for over five years. So SEO in WordPress, big selection of plugins on the repository that are free, mostly freemium. And the problem with those mostly is that they are huge, massive interfaces, massive amount of settings, massive amount of work to understand them and to kind of use them to some extent. So when I was on a hunt for something a little bit more lightweight, I came across a new plugin for SEO. Well, what was new to me, but apparently it's been going for five years. It is the quite extraordinary slim SEO plugin. I can't begin to tell you what a refreshing change this plugin is to all the regular SEO plugins for WordPress. Remarkable is all I'm saying. And quite frankly, it's absolutely all you ever need to do SEO. Super clean interface, no nonsense with premium upsells, no missing features. It's pure fire and forget. So let me take you through the simply epic slim SEO. Right, SEO, slim down plugins. I've got it installed. Let's activate it. We get the splash page. First thing I love about Slim SEO is that it doesn't take over your admin. It's no massive SEO link and colors and banners and do this and do that. One notification and that's just the first thing you'll see, which is to fix the RSS. This is simply to make sure that your RSS feed is just the excerpt, not the full text. So people aren't rinsing your content, basically. But also what that does is it actually puts a link in to the RSS feed itself back to your website. So if someone is nicking your content, they're going to get a nice little link to your website in there as well. Right on with the features. Now you'll see that everything is turned on here. We'll go through the one by one very quickly but this is the beauty of this plugin everything is set for you there are one or two that you might want to turn off but it literally is fire and forget turn it on fix your rss and you're off to the races so let's get to these features meta title and meta description these are added automatically by the plugin to your pages and this is crucial for seo because if you go to an seo score on page speed insights this score here, the SEO score, if you've got no meta description or meta title, that will drop by 10 to 20 percent, maybe more. And what it does, it just takes the title from the page title, but the meta description it takes from the, the text in the document automatically. Now, don't get me wrong. You should write your own meta titles and meta descriptions because your SEO will be better. But this is not about that. This is about getting things done quickly without having to worry about it. I'll show you what I mean. So on our sample page here, you see down the bottom, we've now got our SEO settings and it just takes the page title, including the site title, and it just takes this from the text in the page. Now, like I said, you should be changing this to a more optimized description. And as part of your publishing process, you should be writing these or your authors should be. But the fact it does it for you automatically means you'll pass the SEO score on page speed insights right back to our settings meta robots simply put let's open that up it will do all your robots tags for you and stop stuff being indexed that shouldn't be like 404s and things like search results stuff without any content on it again just fire and forget stuff also if you want to hide any posts specifically if we go back to our sample page here we've got a little setting here to hide from search results so if you've got a landing page or some private-ish page, it's not going to turn up on your sitemap and it's not going to get indexed by Google or others. Right, next up, Open Graph, huge. If you want your content to be shared, and I hope you do, then having Open Graph set up for you is outstanding. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the homepage, it's a 2024. If we go to a post, we'll find any old post, do it and inspect that. Look at all this, these tags we've got, all this Open Graph stuff. This really tells the robots and also is crucial when you're sharing stuff on the socials because all that info gets passed across and it's all done automatically. Uh, it's exactly the same for Twitter cards, the Twitter version of that. OK, next up, canonical URL. Let me explain. So see, we've got our page here, a few posts. The URL is some posts, but if I just grab some text, paste that in, you see, 
the URL for this page is also that. If we hit that URL, it gets redirected to the real URL. And what this does, this setting here, it makes sure that it's telling the search engines what's the real URL in case there's any duplicates. You might see that pop up on Search Console a few times. Relative links. Now this is cool. Uh, and it says here that it adds relative links to the previous and next pages. I haven't actually got that to work on block themes, but I haven't checked on other types of themes. But it is good for your SEO. We'll have to come back to that one. Sitemaps, huge. Of course, you need, you need a sitemap to tell Google about all your index pages. And it's instant with Slim SEO, but there's loads of extra settings for different bits and pieces for the sitemap. But out the box, you've got a sitemap, job done. Image to alt text, absolutely enormous. Let's um, close up some of these and let's get the media library open. And see this alt text in there? I didn't put that in there. We just turn off this plugin again. Let's deactivate the plugin. Go back to our media library, refresh that. You see the alt text is gone. It's the plugin is adding the alt text and that is huge for on-page SEO and accessibility. Again, fire and forget, don't even have to worry about it. Super lightweight, there's breadcrumbs, super easy. Very useful for SEO, not necessarily. I mean, I don't include them on stuff like brochure sites or brand sites, but when you need them on things like shop sites or listing sites, stuff like that, amazingly easy to use. Have a look at this. Let's open up their docs here and we scoot down to the short code, which is somewhere, there it is. So you can add it to your theme, obviously. Copy that, we're using a block theme, so we'll just pop that in the header of our template part, open that up. Let's get editing that. We'll put a group after our header. Add another little group in there because it's 2024 to get the width going. And in there, we'll just add our short code. There's our short code. There's our save. Back to our front end, refresh that. And we've got a nice little breadcrumb there. Right, back to our features. And oh, by the way, you can change the divider by, where is it? It's, uh, yeah, the separator by adding in a little short code parameter of separator equals, and you can put in whatever symbol you want there. There we go. Right, back to our feature list, RSS. We explained that a little bit and how it also adds that backlink. You can read more about it on the docs. Okay, next up is schema. Now, this is a slightly larger subject, plus they've actually got a paid, remember this is free, this plugin. They've got a paid plugin, which is specifically designed for schema which is brilliant for your SEO, a more detailed review of their schema stuff when we review the schema standalone plugin. Now redirection, if you don't use a redirection plugin on your site, then this is a good option. I always use the redirection plugin, so I would just turn this off. Plus on the actual settings page, I found there was some weird stuff where it was redirecting the author archive, which I've I've reached out to the devs and asked a question on that. But you should have redirection on your site. But my view is to probably use a redirection plugin with things like 404 logs and stuff like that. But as a quick fix, leave it on, redirect your 404 to the home page if that's what you want, because some folk do that. Not sure why, but there we go. That's the features all covered. Fire and forget stuff. There's an option to put a little bit of code. So if, to save you having to add another plugin to add header and footer code, that kind of stuff. Or if you can't be bothered to write a function for that. Right, homepage. You'll only see this if you've got your homepage set as your latest posts. Let me show you what I mean. So on settings and reading, you see we've got the homepage set as your latest post. So that means we're seeing this because if you've got that set and that's basically the template for if we go to templates that's the blog home which we've got so it's not actually a page so we can't actually add the seo settings to it meta stuff and the social sharing stuff and that's why we get the option here to do exactly that because again your seo score on page speed insights will go down if that's not done if we changed our readings to a static page and we made that just one of our pages and refresh that you see our home page option has gone so reset that back and it comes back and you can add your title and your description and the image you want to show when you share it on facebook same for twitter so next up we got post types and this is basically where you can exclude them from the search results absolute essential especially if you've got plugins that create post types for their components like say you've got elementor installed 
and that creates a post type called landing pages so you can exclude them from your search results right socials this is very cool so you can just set a default social image to share that's if you haven't set one on the individual post page or category custom post types etc you've always got the right image that you want to be shared even if you haven't set that and there's an option to put your analytics that in there from your socials well certainly for facebook and twitter next up we got tools which essentially is just the import from any of these seo plugins plus the redirects from standalone redirect plugins if you wanted to get those in there then we've got the redirection as previously discussed with the settings that we've seen before and if you want to add a redirect you can choose the type and then add them as you would normally with any redirect plugin okay so that's the settings the features and the settings i mean it's done for you you don't have to do anything what you should be doing though is obviously going to your content and taking time to write really good meta titles great meta descriptions getting the facebook image in and the twitter image the social share images in that you want to for actual seo goodness uh, and just another note is that on our category pages we've got the same deal where you can add the meta stuff and the images canonical url etc so all in all slim seo is absolutely bonkers straight out the box done for you seo fire and forget literally fire and forget absolutely love it i'm not turning back i don't think i'm ever going to use a different seo plugin my 100 percent recommendation anyway share your thoughts if you'd like to and also check out the next video but until next time i shall see you later